Welcome everybody for the press conference regarding uh, the game in the playoff to the Champions League between Malmö FF and Celtic. Uh, the whole press conference will be in English, so I kindly ask you to ask your question also in English. And uh, <coughs> finally, I want you to wait to, to get your microphone so everybody can hear your question. Thank you very much. On my left hand side, I have our coach, Auge Haureide, and also our captain, Markus Rosenberg. And you are welcome to ask questions. Uh, hey. hey, boys. Hey. Det är samma på svenska som engelska. I would like to ask both of you how important you would say this match is for uh, for the club Malmö FF. I think it was more important last year, in fact, uh, so both um, financially and, and um, football-wise, because um, I think it's, um, I think that uh, we have to sort of do something we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. No, we've done it, and um, I think the boys are more relaxed now than we probably were last year, but all matches are important at this level. And uh, I think it's very difficult to just to um, sort of uh, rate them what this year or, or the last year. But this year is we're already, already in Europe in the Euro League, and uh, that I think that is uh, can also be a place to to play and to get experience. And um, but we want to be in the um, in the finest league. And that, that's the Champions League. I agree. Okay, next question. No further questions at all? Okay. Uh, okay. In, uh, in Scotland, uh, the general opinion is that you've been a little too satisfied with uh, the 2-3 result. Uh, and they write about and talk about uh, you being the team uh, that must win tomorrow. Uh, what, what's, uh, how do you rank the game? How is the, if you said a percentage? Is it fifty-fifty? Is it? What do you think? I think it's. Uh, I've seen uh, Celtic play uh, Karabakh away from home. They they do that in in a, in a great manner. Uh, they defend well when when needed because they had only one. They had one goal lead in that game as well, so they're capable of defending and a good physique in the, in, the, in that in in, in that part of the, the team as well. So I think they are capable of that and uh, that makes it a difficult game. I think it um, could be harder to break down Celtic than break down Salzburg because Salzburg is going forward all the time, you know, without thinking of defending. Celtic is more balanced in that way, also tactically balanced. So that, may, that makes that a, a, a bigger task to, to break down Celtic. But we have the confidence because we played at home in, in, uh, in many matches, important matches from, take that with us from last year. And uh, we have uh, an extra sort of um, booster in our crowd, in our fans. And I think that this is a tight stadium, like 20,000 in here, you know, it's, um, it's the same as 60,000 at Celtic Park. Celtic Park is a huge place to play, but this is very, very tight and tense, you know, and, and that gives the player the energy. And uh, now we play them once, so we know a little bit more about Cel how to play Celtic. And uh, now we have um, Marcus and Adu back, uh, strengthen our side offensively, and uh, we can attack. And I think our side is more sort of suitable to attack. Uh, and um, at home, we've we done that perfectly before, so why not again? Marcus, uh, you don't play the first game in Scotland. But what's uh, your thought about Celtic and uh, which is the best player? Oh, I don't know. They have a lot of good players. Uh, it's a good uh, team. I think they uh, had a good start in Glasgow. Uh, first 15 minutes was fantastic. The rest of the game was equal. Uh, we had a lot of chances. They had a lot of chances. And um, yeah, I see them as favorites. When they come here tomorrow, of course, when they had 3-2, but Salzburg was f favorites and many teams were favorites here when they came here and uh, they lost. So, um, 
I'm lo just looking forward for the game and uh, hoping that we can uh, perform well. Question to Marcus from uh, Often Boston in Norway. How do you feel the pressure of being the team captain, taking the club to the Champions League group stage for the second year in a row? No, no, it's not pressure. We've done it once and we can do it twice. Um, when you play in a club in Sweden or in the north, there is never pressure to come to Champions League. Because we didn't been there so many years and now when we done it once, it's much easier the second time in your head. And like you said before, the pressure is there's no pressure, but we know what we can do uh, in this stadium with the fans, with the atmosphere. Everything is possible back home. Uh, Olga, what would you say is the biggest difference here for the um, for the um, uh, visiting team playing in Malmo? Um, as you said, the, the, the atmosphere at, at Celtic Park is fantastic. And you also said it's different here. In, in what way? And what, in what way would you say it will be different for them? It's much, much tighter here. We're closer to the spectators, you know, and especially when you play the right way. It is, uh, it's, uh, you feel that uh, the space spectators are sitting next to you. And I think that's taken the players as well, you know, when they play. And... Uh, the, the Salzburg and Sparta Prague player and the Olympiacos player and even the Atletico Madrid players who play there, they notice the, the um, intensity. Also the intensity takes the players, gives them more energy. You can see there's a booster all the time, you know, the players who run more when you're tired, you get the people behind you, the crowd behind you. And that's a fantastic feeling because uh, everyone is united out here. So it's like, uh, uh, even if it's only 20,000 compared to Celtic Park, there's nothing. But uh, compared to the atmosphere, it's, it's fantastic. And the atmosphere the fans creates for us is, um, is a real booster. So th I think that's one of the things why we've done so well in the, in, the, in, the cha in, in the qualifiers at home. Nobody scored at us here. We have, um, we have a clean sheet in quali qualifier from last year and this year. And I think that shows uh, that we have the con we're confident enough, you know, to go into the to the task. But it will be a tough task. But we're confident. Marcus, if you compare the uh, other qualification matches against, for example, Prague, and the both against Salzburg, you were in a in a situation which was like nothing to nothing to lose situation. This one is a little bit different, isn't it? That everybody is saying that you still you do have a have a big chance to to qualify. Would would you? as a team and maybe as a player, look to this match a little bit more different than nothing to lose? Yeah, I look at it differently because the, the result is better than we had before. We had 2-1 with us last year against Salzburg. But I think, um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's opportunity to, to get in there in Champions League once more. You just have to see positive too to the game and uh, and uh, the pressure is not higher because you have a, a better result. Uh, it just makes it easier and uh, especially when you score away the the difference is, is much bigger. We felt this was difficult last uh, game against Salzburg because we didn't score away so now you, it's more easy just to, to go forward and think more offens offen offensively than, than we did last time. And I think it's um, it's better for our team. Marcus, uh, w what do you expect from the start tomorrow, and uh, how important is the start? I, if, if you look at the last game, it's important. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit different. Of course, we learned our lesson. Uh, probably Celtic will not go uh, as offensively as they did in, in Glasgow, and probably we will go a little bit more offensively. Uh, Oge from VG, uh, you had some great comebacks uh, here at this stadium uh, in the Champions League qualifications last year and this uh, year. Uh, why is that? Uh, are you best when you have to attack? Uh, I think you're right there. You know, it, it seems to uh, bring out the best of the players that we have to attack and have to have to win. It's been the same in the in the league as well. We've been under pressure. We we, we beat Gothenburg out there. 
uh, beat Salzburg out there. So it seems to bring out, uh, and then they had had some terrible matches against the teams who in, in the bottom of the league, that we hasn't brought out the best of the players. But I think that will come because the, the players are, we have many new players. We have only three men left from the side who qualified for the Champions League last year. It is Marcus, Anton Tinerholm and Nadu. And the rest is new boys. And, and we need to get together more to, to uh, sort of uh, be stable in our performances. Uh, I think we can perform really well on, on our best days, you know, and we had a, had very good days against Salzburg at home. And the fun, funnily enough, this year we, we are not outplayed as we were last year in Salzburg. We were very lucky last year. We could have been 3-0 and, uh, and Philipp Lander saved on the goal line and we got, got the lucky goal at the end and 2-1. This time we fought back in a different way at Celtic Park because a new team could have broken down completely after that shock opening from Celtic being down 2-0 after 10 minutes. Very tough for the boys, you know. It shows morale and, and, uh, and uh, guts in the side, you know. We couldn't lean on Marcus. The captain was out. Adu was out. We have to sort of lift the teams uh, by themselves, you know, and I did that fantastically. And at the end, we, we worked hard. And at the end, in, in, at 2-1, we had control of the game. And then they make mistakes. And uh, at the end, we got to 3-2, which is a good result for us. But as I said, uh, Salt Celtic is capable of defending. I think it's more, I think they're more an international side than, than Salzburg is, and they know what to do on away ground. So um, it'd be a tough task, but we uh, will be a combat. That's for sure. Marcus, after the last game, uh, a lot of your players were saying that Celtic playing hard, maybe ugly. Um, will you treat them treat them the same way back here in Malmo? We're going to play exactly the same way that we always play here, back home. Uh, when you come to a high level, you always play uh, hard and it's tough. And I think ty typical for Scottish football is also hard and tackles and everything. So I wasn't surprised, but I wasn't, in, uh, I wasn't on the field either. So, But from the stands, it felt like it was a fair game. players is there a danger that your players are maybe too confident going into this game judging by some of the things that they have been quoted as saying what have I said then yeah, yeah, don't read Scottish papers what have I said well there were quotes that the goalkeeper likened the Celtic players to pigs there was also yourself at after the game saying that you felt that Celtic were too tired yes I did as well yes do, I did I felt you? felt a bit tired at the mm. end because we got the goals in the second half uh, regarding um, the comments from our goalkeeper, I tell you, if you if you travel abroad, and if you play, if you're going to write about players from Sweden or Norway or Germany or Spain or France, you have to know the words. You know, you have to learn your words because English, if you pronounce the word directly, it would be because pig means uh, pig means Greece, the Sweden, or or. Sweet, uh, to play like a pig is like you, you play dirty. So I will call it, as Marcus said, it was a tough game, but it was not a dirty game. So whatever I say, you have to know the pronunciation because a pig is something else in English mm. than it's in, in Scandinavia. Because you have a word that starts with F and ends with K. And you, said it, you say it all the time, you know. But it means something else in Scandinavia. It's not a, and it's not a swearing in Scandinavia. So you have to have respect for other languages as well, you know, because that's why I'm upset of the press, because you just translate things, put things in headlines, and then you get, then you get something out of it. We had it said it. It's like the, young, the, the goalkeeper and other players that can say what I want to say themselves, you know. But I stand for they, they looked at Celtic looked tired at the end of the game. So do you think then that what has been said in, and then the quotes, which may have been misrepresented, has that? inspired your players ahead of this game i think so i think it inspired but you know it's like it's like uh, the only thing i want from the from the press is to tell the truth and then you have to have respect for the languages and the places you you travel to to pronounce things correctly that's the only thing i i asking for um, my second question just find briefly um you mentioned uh, celtic and their defense you think that they will defend better there's a lot of speculation about virgil van dyke suggestions that he will leave Celtic after this game. If you were a manager with a player who's subject to speculation, would you play him in a game of this magnitude? I think he was on the plane to, to Sweden this morning. Mm. 
So uh, we haven't even mentioned it because we, we reckon he's going to play. And he, he, the public said he play with the best team. I, th I think the, Ronnie will play with the best teams all the time. Um, är det igång? Ja. Marcus, um, uh, Rasmus Bengtsson said after the game that uh, uh, there was a lot, lots of trash talk and that uh, you would like it in the second game. Yeah, it's funny. It's part of the game. What should I say? Uh, I wasn't there, but I heard it's a little bit different in Europe than in, in Alsvenska maybe. And Everything is a little bit tougher and always maybe uh, maybe all, also the language, but it's it's just a part of the game. Are you good at it? What? Are you good at it? Do you speak? Do you know the trash talk? You can do it? If I can do it, uh, we will see. In all in all languages? Uh, not all, but a few. <laughs> uh, uh, it's me, yeah. Uh, if you win, uh, if, uh, will you be happy? And if yes, uh, how much? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I yes. will be happy if I will, if we win. And how much? And uh, very much. Very much. <laughs> yes. The Celtic uh, captain said he would be super duper happy yeah. if they won. Yeah, then you think they're more motivated than you are? Yeah, maybe then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we will see tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Hi, fellas. This is for BT Sport, Paul Dempsey. Olga, and to you also, Marcus. Tell us more, please. Uh, as guests this week about the impact of your defeat at the weekend because you're in a terrible fight for this title this year, aren't you? Yeah, it doesn't matter at all. It's a totally different game. We had tough games in uh, in Sweden against the lower teams and uh, we won against the best, so uh, it was artificial gas uh, away. Uh, 3,000 in the stands. Doesn't matter. Uh, we had a terrible game before we played Salzburg against the bottom team. And we lifted ourselves for the Salzburg game. So I don't think it's any problem. I think the, um, it's a funny thing, but uh, it's, it's, um, it's better to play these European games than the, the league games before, because I think they inspire the players more. That's, that's one of the problems when you've been into the Champions League. You know, the, the, These players, even if it's new players, they... They've seen it all last year, you know, and uh, the players get the inspiration because they know how big it is. They know the importance of the games and they know that it's like Juventus, Atletico Madrid and maybe other stands in front of you for the games. That is a great inspiration. If, if you haven't been there, it's, not, it's hard to think of it. But have, being there, these matches gives you everything and the players give you everything. So uh, there's no no problem to find any inspiration and motivation for the for these games, you know. Even if it, some of the games we played in the in the in the league, some of them I say some of them we, we could have won more than the, all the draws we had, but uh, some of them we could have played better. We should have played better. Would you also give Celtic? Would you also give Celtic some credit for not putting in a bad performance, getting the result they needed at the weekend? Absolutely, I think that's uh, that is one of the um, one of the best parts of the side. You know, they, they they managed to graft and work for it. Uh, I was at Kilmarnock, and uh, that Kilmarnock performance that uh, reminded me of our performance. So they have their downs, but they grafted one point at all. But uh, I think all it's the same problems with us. You know, it's like. When you come and play in the league and you're dominating against the sides, you know, you're always on, you have to break them down and then you get counter-attacked and counter-attacked all the time. Celtic was counter-attacked against Kilmarnock. And I think it's the standard of the leagues is, is, is the key to get like teams like Celtic and, and Malmö or other Swedish teams in regularly into Europe. You need more tough matches. And I think that's one of the problems both for Scotland and for Sweden and also for all the Scandinavian countries, that's for sure. Any further questions?